Hey everybody, I'm Chris Massey and welcome to the Chris Massey Show here on the American Hearts Radio Network. We're coming to you live tonight from our studio here in downtown Atlanta and tonight is episode one of season two. We'd like to thank everybody for tuning in and Happy New Year to everybody. I hope your new year is rolling along just the way you want it. Now, when I'm in discussion with a lot of my uh, conservative and Republican friends, one of the topics that always comes up is, are gay people born gay or do they choose to be that way? Now, let me tell you something. If you want to get somebody on the religious right in a full-blown five-alarm frenzy, just tell them that you think gay people are born that way. I'm telling you what, they'll lose their mind. Then after they do that, they're going to get the Bible out and they're going to turn it to some chapter in Leviticus. And there's a verse in there that says something to the effect of, a man should not lay with another man the way he lays with a woman. Now, if you need me to translate that for you, according to the religious right, what that means is, if you engage in gay sex, you're going to burn in hell. That's right. But the verse that's after that is the one that I find the most interesting. And this verse says something, and again, I'm paraphrasing here, Man should not lie with a beast and defile himself or is an abomination in the eyes of God. Now, what that means is, is that we shouldn't have sex with animals. Now, I have to tell you, when I was growing up and my father sat me down to talk to me about the birds and the bees, he never once told me I shouldn't have sex with animals. How about you, Al? Nope. Did your dad tell you? you shouldn't, are you sure about that? I'm sure. Now, the reason that my dad didn't tell me I shouldn't have sex with animals and the reason that I've never had sex with animals, as far as I know, is because uh, I intuitively knew that it was wrong. Now, this is the level of intellect of people of the Old Testament, okay? Not only did they have to be told that they couldn't have sex with animals, but they had to have somebody write it down so they could use it as a reference point. So I was thinking the other day, now, if sexuality is a choice for gay people, shouldn't it be a choice for all of us? So I was wondering, how old was I when I decided that I wanted to be heterosexual instead of homosexual? Well, the fact is, is that I didn't have to choose. You know why? Because I was born that way. For crying out loud, how hard is this to understand? If gay people can choose to be gay, what you're saying is, is that they have the power to completely ignore their natural of being sexually attracted to the opposite sex, take that energy, move it in a complete different direction, become sexually attracted to the same sex. While they're having sex with the same sex, they become completely unattracted to the opposite sex, which is who they were naturally attracted to when they were born. Now let me tell you something. That is an awful lot of power. I know some fat people out there that like to be able to do that with ice cream. Right? <laughs> favorite minister, of course, is Mr. John Hagee, and he's the uh, head of Cornerstone Cult in San Antonio, Texas. And from a sermon in 1996 entitled Homosexuality, Abomination, or Alternative, and you can find this sermon uh, on YouTube, he told his congregation that they should be a little weary of the fact that the medical community was saying that you could not get AIDS from casual contact. After all, God hates homosexuals, and AIDS is the wrath of God, and that's why there is no cure. Mr. Hagee, let me tell you something. If you were telling that to your congregation in 1996, then you are a true, vested, certified moron. For over 12 years in 1996, it was a known medical fact that you could not spread the AIDS disease by casual contact. Now, Mr. Hagee went on to say that by the year 2010, there would be 20 million people in America with the AIDS virus. Excuse me. Well, Mr. Hagee, like everything else that comes out of your mouth, you were wrong about that. Today in 2015, there are 1.4 million people in America with the AIDS virus. Hell, you were only off 18,600,000. I mean, at least, at least you were kind of in the ballpark. Fact of the matter, Mr. Hagee, is that obesity is a bigger problem in the United States today than the AIDS virus. And what about cancer? A lot more people have that and a lot more people die from it. But I don't see you up there saying that that's the wrath of God now, do I? Now, four or five hundred years ago, if you were left-handed, you were considered to be evil of the devil. And you had to hide the fact that you were left-handed. Today, we know that 90% of the people on the planet are right-handed. About 9% are left-handed and 1% are ambidextrous. They can use both. Now, why is it so hard to get a hold of the idea that perhaps 90% of the people on this planet are heterosexual, 9% are homosexual, and 1% are bisexual? 
I'll tell you why. Because the Bible says it's wrong. And if some right-handed people would have gotten together in the Old Testament and came up with some verse like, he who makes usefulness of his left hand is evil and an abomination in the eyes of God. Well, then guess what? Today, left-handed people would be as big a minority as gay people would be. Can you imagine what people would say? Oh, John, you're not going to believe it. It's worse than we thought. Not only is Melissa having sex, she's fornicating with a boy that's left-handed. Yeah, I tell you what. You get some of them goddamn sorry left-handed people in there running this government. Ain't no goddamn telling what's going to happen. You like that, Al? Woo. <laughs> now, most people, most liberal people anyway, when they see a gay couple, they see two people that love and care about each other. Now, how can that be wrong? But now the religious right, they see two people that are doing something in the bedroom that they shouldn't be doing. Well, I got a little tip for you. Why don't you do like Jesus did and mind your own business? See, Jesus never spoke out about sexuality because he really wasn't concerned about what you were doing in the bedroom. He was more concerned about what you were doing outside of the bedroom. Now, we know that Jesus was very fond of a woman named Mary Madeline. She was a prostitute. So I tell you what, all you church-going single guys out there, this spring, why don't you take a prostitute to the Sunday school picnic? Take her around and introduce her to everybody as a prostitute. See how holy everybody thinks you are then. That's right. Homosexuality is not an abomination. It's not even an alternative. It's just the way it is and the way it's always been. All right, we got a fantastic show tonight. I have got Elizabeth Robinson from Flat Rock Swing and David Faulkner, bass player of the CMB. Get your beer and relax. It's going to be a good one tonight. We'll be right back. Hey, everybody. I'm Chris Massey from The Chris Massey Show. You know, one of my favorite places to hang out, eat, and play music is the Moonshine Tavern in Tucker, Georgia. Moonshot Tavern, they got great food, great drink, and great live music five nights a week. Right now at the Moonshot Saloon, you can go and get five appetizers for five bucks, five bucks each. That's right, five appetizers for $25. So just go down there and get them. Hell, those appetizers, man, that's a whole meal in itself. We're back, we're back. Make sure you put the disclaimer on the show this week, Michael Lloyd. Anyway, okay, my first guest tonight is a very talented singer. I've known her for a long time. She got a little late start in the music business, but hey, it's better late than never. She started off with a band called Elizabethan Rodeo, which eventually turned into the band she has now called Flat Rock Swing. They're going to be playing this Friday night at the Greater Good Barbecue in Tucker and also appearing at the Inman Park Festival in May. Would you please welcome Miss Elizabeth Robinson. Elizabeth, come on in. Come on in. Good to see you. Come on in. All right. Okay, Elizabeth. Now, I talked to you earlier, and I know a little bit about your background. I know you're from New York City. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and I know that you've always kind of uh, dabbled in singing a little bit in church choir and, and stuff like that. And I also know that you were in some uh, musicals from, uh, from, from a Clarkston group that uh, put on some musicals. You did some singing in that as well. Mm -hmm. And you've been urged by people for years and years and years to do it. And then finally, a couple years ago, everything fell into place. And uh, tell me how you got started with that. Uh, actually, I was dating someone who heard me sing in the car. And he said, you need to be doing this. Okay. And so that was that. We put a band together, and that was Elizabethan Rodeo. Okay. Mm -hmm. And you did some shows with Chris Massey Band, we I did. remember. Yes, we did. Uh, we did uh, Shorties and at uh, Dillon's out mm -hmm. in, uh, in uh, Duluth. Mm -hmm. So, um, okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Now, um, the thing you're doing at Elizabethan Rodeo now, I know you guys did a benefit at the Masquerade, and there's a nice video of you guys on that, that I saw. You doing that song? Uh, come on, come on into the, come on up to the house. Mm -hmm. And uh, your music is more like what you would call Americana, is that yes. right? Mm -hmm. It is. Okay. Yeah. And even the stuff, the cover stuff that you do. Uh, yeah, I know you do some Dwight Yoakam. Mm -hmm. You do some Bonnie Raitt. Mm -hmm. Who are some of the other groups that you guys uh, do? I love it. We do some old Linda Ronstadt. Okay. Um, yeah. Okay. And I know Americana music is becoming very popular. Mm -hmm. Um, a couple of years ago, I went to see uh, John Mellencamp at the Fox. And uh, John just played about three or four hits from the old days, and his new album was completely Americana. Oh. He had a fiddle player up there and a banjo player and oh. stand-up bass. So uh, you guys might want to check out that album. There's probably some, some good, obsolete material that a lot of people, because it didn't get a lot of play on, on the radio, yeah. you know. So, uh, so you do the singing, 
And, and you guys are just now starting to branch off into doing some originals, is that right? Yep, we are. Okay. How many original tunes you guys got? I think we got three right now. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. So I know the, you know, the first time you got up there and started singing on stage, it had to be a little bit nerve wracking. How has that yeah. transition come to uh, being uh, to being comfortable up there? You know, I think it's uh, the more you do it, the more comfortable you get doing it. That's right. You know, and a lot more feedback from people that have seen me do it, mm -hmm. and being able to see myself on video and right. you know hear myself. So that's all been very helpful. And people that don't do it don't realize that every time you do it, it's different. It's different. Even if you're playing a club that you've played, you know, 15, 20 times. I mean, I know some nights when I get up there, if I'm if I'm not comfortable, it's it feels like I'm standing on the edge of a cliff. Yeah. That, that's what it feels like, and it feels like I could go over the edge any minute. And then eventually, this gig we did this past weekend at the uh, Jump Kitchen Saloon in Woodstock was kind of like that. It's it, They're trying to make it a rock and roll bar, but it's really like a restaurant, you know, and when you get started, I mean, you know, it's it's just... It's just not real, you know, it doesn't feel right, you yeah. know. But uh, once you do, it uh, feel good. And you know, as well as I do, that um, a singer with no confidence is doomed. Yes. Is doomed. You know, you got to you gotta get up there and, and think you can do it. Because I, I know that, that has happened to me before. And, I, you know, I've been up on stage singing, and I look out and see, oh, no, look who's here. You know, <laughs> you know look, look, look who's here tonight, you know. Uh -oh. And then it changes everything. Mm -hmm. change, change, changes everything. So it takes a while to... Uh, to get that going. Now, you're going to do a tune for us tonight. Is that right? Mm -hmm. But before we get to that, I want to mention uh, that you guys are going to be at the Inman Park Festival. Yes, we are. That is a very good gig yes, to, to get is. to get in the city yes. of Atlanta. It yeah. is. You're going to get a lot of exposure, mm -hmm. and a lot of people in the music scene uh, will be there. In fact, I'll probably be there to check you guys out okay. um, for that. And uh, this greater uh, good barbecue, that's kind of like y'all's home thing now. Y'all can yeah. kind of do that whenever. and Play that once a month. Once a month, mm -hmm. and you draw, draw some people out there to oh, see yeah. you for that. Oh, yeah. Very good. Very good. Okay, uh, well, we're going to bring uh, Jeff up. Okay. And what song are you guys going to do for us tonight? We're going to do a song that's called Ain't No Ash Will Burn, and I always say this, and Jeff's probably tired of me saying it, but this is the song that started it all. This okay. was a song that Jeff heard and said, this is why I want to get a girl Excellent. and do a Excellent. Jeff, band. come on up. All right. Make yourself comfortable, and you guys just uh, get at it. It's Elizabeth Robinson and Jeff from Flat Rock Swing. Virginia cold But when 
Well, in every life there comes a time There, there are no more tears to cry And we all leave something dear behind There ain't no ash will burn The love is a precious thing I'm told It burns just like West Virginia Come back and be on the show sometime. Flat Rock Thank Swing. You. They'll be at the Inman Park uh, Music Festival in May and at the Greater Good Barbecue in Tucker this Friday night. Check them out. Great job, guys. Thank we'll you. be right back. Calvary Gutter Services, LLC, provides quality service to our customers. We are committed to excellence and offer a two-year warranty on all workmanship and a lifetime clog-free warranty on all gutter cover systems. We are fully insured for your protection. We are experts in copper and half round gutter systems which are offered in sizes ranging from 6 inches to 8 inches. Full soffit and fascia systems can be replaced as we install gutters to avoid wood rot and ensure a job well done. We proudly offer Magnolia under deck systems. We ensure that you are happy with the service we provide. If you need a pro, call us 678-389-7945. That's 678-389-7945, Calvary Gutter Services. Find us on the web at www.gutteratlanta.org. All right, we're back, we're back. Now, usually, this is a segment of the show where we have Leon Smoker and Rachel Jordan to do the Hippie Dippy Classic Album Review. Since Rachel now is doing her own show, College Confidential, which debuted this past Wednesday and has got some really uh, great reviews, honey, we're real proud of you here. She will only be appearing on the show the last Tuesday, the fourth Tuesday of the month, much to uh, Mr. Smoker's dismay that we uh, cut his appearances in half. He's not, uh, he's not real happy about that. I uh, just want to go over some stuff real quick. The Chris Massey Band will be playing February 6th at the Moonshadow Tavern, and we're going to be playing with Joe Hall. Now, if you don't know who Joe Hall is, Joe Hall is one of the up-and-coming singer-songwriters from Atlanta who's making a lot of noise in Nashville right now. He just signed with the William Morrison Agency in Nashville. And for those of you that don't know, when you sign with the William Morrison Agency, you just took a gigantic step toward getting your name on that dotted line for the record deal that we all dream about. He played, uh, he played this past weekend over at Wild Bill's in the Crown Lounge, sold the place out. Okay? I mean, it was packed. Let me tell you something. The Moonshadow is only about half the size of the Crown Lounge. Tickets are 10 bucks, so if you want to be there, you need to get there early that night. He also had Gina Gailey, who is a friend of the show, a very uh, lovely and fine country singer. She was on that bill with him. Sorry, guys, I couldn't get there. We played the Jump Kitchen Friday night, and I was wore out come, uh, come Saturday. So, Al, did you know that, uh, uh -oh. you know, uh, you know who Kate Upton is? Yeah. You know, she's that real pretty model, you know. Well, there's this, uh, I was on the internet the other day, there's this uh, pub over in England where I guess she used to come or whatever. And uh, anyway, they uh, had a glass company make a glass out of the shape of one of her breasts. 
I'm not making this up. I mean, you can really see it on the internet. And you can get beer in it. You can get wine in it. You can get tequila. Whatever you want to drink out of it. Well, this drink debuted this past Saturday night, and they had to throw a lot of male patrons out when they found out that the glass didn't come with a nipple. Can you believe that? <laughs> you like that, don't you, Al? Yeah, man. You know, I don't know where you get this stuff. <laughs> All right, we'll be right back with David Faulkner from the CMB. Scottdale Metal Products, your family-owned and operated gutter supply house since 1971. Wholesale prices are available to the public and we offer worldwide shipping. See our full catalog, gutters and coil, downspout, elbows, end caps and miters, outlets, debris protection, hangers K-style, hangers half round, and many other accessories. Look us up on the web at scottdalemetal.net. That's scottdalemetal.net. Give us a call at 770-922-1330. That's 770-922-1330. Scottdale Metal Products, Incorporated. 1520 Parker Road, Southeast, Conyers, Georgia, 30094. Scottdale Metal Products is a proud sponsor of the Chris Massey Web TV Music Show on AmericanHorseRadio.com. All right, we're back. We're back. Now, what can I say about my next guest, okay? Uh, he has been playing the bass guitar for a long time. He's played with people like Conway Twitty. Uh, was in a band with Rick Richards for the Georgia, from the Georgia Satellites for years and years. Uh, spent 10 years plucking the bass for the great late blues legend, Lots of Papa. Um, he, for the last six years, he's been playing bass in the Chris Massey Band. He and I have ridden thousands and thousands of miles together, and we have bumped in every Motel 6 from Hartford, Connecticut, to Dallas, Texas, to Los Angeles, California, to Tulsa, Oklahoma. Would you please welcome my good friend, Mr. David Faulkner. Come on up, Dave. Hey, man. Now, look, you can't tell the rest of the guys you're on the show. Okay, you know, because, you know, they'll want to be on the show, and, uh, you know, yeah, you've, been, you've been with me the longest, so I, I figured that you deserved it out of anybody. Okay. All right, Dave, how old were you when you first started playing the bass? Uh, Eleven. Eleven years old. Eleven, yeah. And it, uh, and it must have come pretty quick, pretty quick to you, is that correct? Yeah, I was, I was fortunate. I had a real good teacher. Um, now, you've always, now, I know a lot of guys, a lot of guys start off on guitar, and six strings ain't working, so they switch to four and go over to the bass. But uh, you've been bass from the get-go, is that correct? Pretty much. Pretty and you know, much. and I'll tell you what, uh, in the years I've played, you can tell a difference between somebody that's always played bass versus somebody that's played guitar and switched to bass. I know a lot of people say, well, if you can play six strings, you can play four. But if you're uh, used to playing the guitar, it's a totally different feel, oh, that's totally true. different mindset. You have to approach everything different. Yeah. And, um, you know, you basically block everything out, and you lock in with the drums and just kind of go with it. Got to be the rhythm section. That's right. That's yeah. right. And you, and you were very good at that. Now, when you were 14 years old, um, you got a phone call about, about a gig. Why don't you tell us a little bit about that at the Playboy Club? Oh, I was uh, playing with Jimmy Carter and the Senators. Okay. And uh, we, uh, we did the uh, Playboy Club in Atlanta for, uh, for a solid week uh, with Conway Twitty, uh, six nights. Wow. Uh, went home, took a nap, went to work. Now, you, uh, you actually played with Conway Twitty, correct? Uh, yes, we did, uh, together and separately. Okay. Uh, they did both, yes. Now, you were telling, now, Con Conway, did, did he have that, that great helmet hair? Oh, yeah. That, that he was famous for? Yes, he did. And I think you told me that he wore a tux and he never sweated. No, never. <laughs> never. Now, what year was that? God, I don't know. Was Hello Darling out then? Uh, well, yeah, it was out. Kansas City was out. Wow. Yeah. So wow. So you're you're playing with him, and yeah. uh, and uh, I guess yeah, you were playing with some of the Twitty Birds. Is that right? Well, we actually got uh, he he had his band that he had for years. Um, I remember the drummer. They called him Pork Chops. Right. Uh, and we actually he let us go on the Twitty Bird one night. His airplane. Cool. So we you know. Uh, we were kids, you know, it was a novelty thing. Now, I know you went to high school with Rick Richards, uh -huh. uh, guitarist for the Georgia Satellites, and, uh, of course, with Izzy Stradlin from Guns N' Roses. He played in that band as well. Uh -huh. And you guys played together a long time, did you not? Well, we played, yeah, yeah, high school and a little after that, yeah, we played together. You guys did some big shows. You played with Marshall Tucker. 
Um, we played, yes, yes, but that was before Marshall Tucker was popular. I got you. Um, I, think, I think you told me one time y'all played at some kind of fair and Bob Seger was there. You guys were on the same bill with that? Yeah, did an opening thing for that. Uh -huh. Oh, okay. Yeah. All right, that's cool. And then um, as the years went on, you, uh, I know you played in a lot of different groups, you know, and, and Dave is one of these kind of musicians, I mean, let me tell you. You know, I don't care what style of music you're playing, Dave can play it. I mean, he is about as versatile as a musician. I mean, you could call him up, you could send him MP3s for 12 or 15 songs, and Dave will show up, and he'll, and he'll know his stuff. He, he really will. Now, um, when was it that you got tied up with lots of Papa? Mm, gosh, it's been... 20 years ago, maybe? 20 years maybe ago? That, maybe you played, about 10, you nine, played so. about 10 years with lots of Papa, right? Yeah. Right after the Olympics. Now, lots of Papa, you know, you're talking about playing a lot of shows. Mm -hmm. Always a big crowd. Yes. Always a big crowd. A very uh, uh, unique performer, I guess you, I could you say. For those of you that don't know lots of Papa, he was a big guy. He weighed about 300 pounds. 468. And, 468. 468. And had, and, had a, and had a voice like honey, man. I mean, he could... He, he could really sing, and he, and he was very popular for a long time. I think he uh, did some work with Sam Cooke in his early days, did he uh, not? He, he, tore, he did the Chitlin Circuit with everybody. Wow. Uh, and we, we did a lot of that stuff with him, which was really neat. I would have never had the chance to Oh, do wow. Yeah, okay. So All right. Those clubs were great. Now, you've been, uh, you've been playing with me now uh, for the better part of about five, five years now, and, and you do some other projects as well. But sometimes I have to fill in for Dave, and I have to tell you, there are times I have to fill in for the drummer, and there's times I have to fill in for the guitar player. You know, when Dave's not there, that's the, that's, that's the one that, hurt, that hurts me the most. As long as I got Dave uh, laying down the rhythm, usually we can keep every, everything, uh, everything together. And um, on uh, the first record, Heartbreak Avenue, you played on the second record, Cowboy Heart, uh -huh. and you're playing on the third record, uh, Tuckerville, which we hope to have open this spring. Yeah. And uh, we've done two tours. Yes. In, in 2013, well, we went up the East Coast and played uh, Baltimore and um, uh, Trenton, New Jersey, and New York and Brooklyn and Hartford and New Haven. Yeah. And uh, and in this past year, we went out west and uh, we played a show at the Whiskey A Go Go in Hollywood, California. Yeah. Now, tell me what your take on that was. I thought that was probably one of the coolest things I've ever done. Oh, uh, you know, to do the Go Go, that's that's pretty cool. It yeah. Was great place, great vibe. And we had a really good crowd on a Tuesday yeah, on a Tuesday night in there, yeah, and uh, they didn't know us from Adam, and we went over really well, yeah, it did. which uh, w which was a real good feeling. Now I got to tell you though, um, you know, when you're on the road, it's not all sunshine and rainbows. Uh, <laughs> let, let me tell you, um, I'm gonna tell this story. We uh, we played in Vegas one night, and the show was over at 2 a.m., and we had to be in Denver the next night, so we drove all night from Las Vegas to Denver through the Rocky Mountains in the middle of the night pulling a, a 5 by 10 trailer and I was driving so if you don't know that's that's pretty scary you know and everybody else was asleep and we got to that Motel 6 and it sounded like they'd been keeping 20 cats it smelled like they'd been keeping 20 cats in that hotel room you remember yeah, that? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> there were similar ones to that. So <laughs> we were so we were so tired we went in there and went to bed and, and got about three hours sleep and then we went and we had to do sound check and we did the gig and we came back and we were exhausted <laughs> And we slept, and uh, the next day, I'm walking by the lobby of the hotel, and I look in there, and all I can see is Dave doing this. <laughs> <laughs> and you were, you were giving that lady what for about it, stomped out of there, and uh, I went in there and, uh, and, and kind of, and I don't blame you, I mean, it, it was horrible, you know, it was horrible, you know, the smell woke me up that morning, oh, and uh, we, uh, we yeah, I, I, I went in there and coaxed her, and she actually gave us the room for free, so. Oh, that was, so. <laughs> that's the least you could have done. <laughs> so, so that, so that, worked, that worked out pretty well, but uh, I don't want to say anything bad about Motel 6, because Motel 6 is the hotel of the Chris Massey band when we're on the road, and uh, for the most part, they're 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 very nice. Yeah, yeah. They're, 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 yeah. They're very nice, and we've stayed in them. Now that one on Hollywood Boulevard, where they're charging 125 dollars a night, I don't know if uh, how nice that one is. Of course, we uh, we ended up staying somewhere else. But uh, Dave, uh, you know, I can't tell you what a pleasure it is to play with you. You bring a professionalism. Uh, to the band that, that, I've, uh, that I've always needed and, and the other bands that I've played with. And uh, we got some big things coming up with this record coming out. And uh, hopefully uh, we're going to be uh, able to do more tours and make a lot more music. That'd be great. Thanks for being on the show, David. Thank David Faulkner, everybody. We'll be right back.
Are you looking for a great night out? Are you in the Atlanta, Georgia area? Are you looking to check out some live, awesome music during the week? They have keno, poker tournaments, horseshoes, and special events. It's all at the Moon Shadow Tavern. That's at 3976 Lawrenceville Highway in Tucker, Georgia. That's the Moon Shadow Tavern. Give them a call, 770-674-2133. Check out their selection of great food, friendly service. Visit their website at msttucker.com. That's www.msttucker.com. Moon Shadow Tavern is a proud sponsor of the Chris Massey Web TV Music Show on www.americanheartsradio.com Make sure you told them that American Hearts Radio sent you. Visit their website, check out their great selection of food, appetizers, wings, burgers, sandwiches and wraps, steaks and chicken, salads and sides. Also their drink specials. Live music during the week. Check them out. Give them a call. 770-674-2133 We are back. We are back for being a guest on the Chris Massey Show. Elizabeth Robinson and David Faulkner will both receive a six-month supply of Rassaroni, the San Francisco treat, and a case of turtle wax. That's right, Monty Hall. Kiss my ass. Okay. All right. Now, um, so let's see. Uh, it's going to be a very exciting year here on the Chris Massey Show. Tonight is the first of 24 shows that uh, we're going to be doing in 2015. Uh, some of the guests that we have got lined up, Mo, the guitarist for uh, Mother's Finest, is uh, going to be here in February. Uh, Glenn Phillips is going to be here in April. Very fine guitarist. Played with the Hampton Grease Band. Toured with, uh, did some uh, dates with Jimi Hendrix and stuff. Can't wait to have, uh, to have those guys on the show. Next week, next Tuesday night, um, what is next Tuesday night? It's the 20, uh, 28th. No. 29th. Anyway, next Tuesday on the 29th, we are going to have Mary Ellen Jones, very fine folk singer. who has been around the Atlanta music scene for a long, long time. And right now I have a tentative from a Mr. Peter V. Peter V., of course, played in the Basics and the Roys and did work with Andy Summers of the Police and Herbie Hancock. So uh, having him on the show is really going to be great. Uh, if Peter cannot make it next week for whatever reason, we hope to have him on at a later date. But hopefully uh, he'll be able to, uh, to be here. So thanks for tuning in tonight. And uh, like I always say, always love you, woman. Take life as it comes. And when you get the chance, have too much fun. We'll see you next week. Yeah.